Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain resource allocation graph in operating system. Uh, resource allocation graph actually represent which resource held by which process and uh, which process is waiting for which resource. So uh, we are going to see this concept in details. And uh, the thing is that why this resource allocation graph we are using. So it is actually used for resource tracking like how many resources we are having in our hand or how many are allocated, how many more are required for a process to complete its execution. So uh, it's, it can also be used for deadlock avoidance. So when we say resource, uh, so uh, in computer resource means uh, CPU, files, IO devices. So uh, these are a few of examples. And uh, these resources we are going to represent with a box. And the process will be represented as a circuit. So when a process need a resource, what that process will do, that process first request the resource. And in case if that resource is available, that resource will be allocated to that process. And that process will use that resource and once the process execution is done process will release the resource so in case if resource is not available process will keep on waiting now in our resource allocation graph if there is an edge from box to circle so box we are having resource circle we are representing as process so it means this resource is allocated to this process and uh, if there is an edge from circuit to box, so it means this process is actually waiting for this resource to be available. Okay, so now let's take one example. So this is the first type we are taking one instance per resource type. Now, what's the meaning of one instance per resource type? These boxes are actually represent resource type. And this one is representing as instance. Uh, let me take a simple example. Let's say we are having three printers. So the resource type is printer, but we are having three. So there are three instance of resource printer. So in our this example, we are going to consider only single instance. Like we are having one resource R1, one resource R2. So let's consider first edge. So this is the edge between this, this box to this circle and this is the directed edge R1 to P1. So it means this R1 is allotted to process P1. Now the second this directed edge means this P2 is actually waiting for resource R1. And the last one is R2 resource is allotted to, to process P2. So the meaning of this uh, the source allocation graph is this one. Now, whenever a process uh, gets all of its resources, in that case, that process will complete its execution, and once it's done, it will release all the resources held by that process. Now, uh, how this will work in this one? So first consider process P1. So process P1 needs one resource R1 and that is already allotted to this process. So P1 will complete its execution and when P1 execution is over, this resource R1 become available. Now whenever a resource is available and if a process is requesting for that resource, that resource will be allotted to requesting process. So now this R1 also allotted to process P2. Now P2 is having all its required resources R1 and R2. P2 also complete its execution. So in this example all our processes completed their execution successfully. Now let's see the same thing in this situation. So here we are having two process P1, P2, two type of resources R1, R2. So process P1 process p1 having resource r1 and process p1 is requesting for r2 and process p2 having resource r2 requesting for r1 
now let's see uh, in this situation whether these processes will complete their execution or not so let's consider p1 so p1 is having r1 but p1 also needs r2 so p1 will keep on waiting for r2 now p2 is having r2 and requesting for r1 and in that, that case p2 also waiting for r1 and the thing is that if a process is having a resource this resource will not be released until it finishes its execution so in that case these both processes will continue waiting they keep on waiting and it will be an infinite waiting so they will never complete their execution so this is the situation which we call deadlock so uh, if we are having a resource allocation graph for this particular type one instance per resource type so in that resource allocation graph if there is a cycle if you can see this is the directed edge so from here we have on this side then here then here so this, if there is an there is a cycle it means there will be a deadlock now we are moving to another type of resource allocation graph which is multiple instance per resource type so it means that now for every resource type we can have multiple instances so let's see for resource r1 we are having two instances one instance is allotted to p1 another one is allotted to p2 so uh, in this uh, scenario we are having a cycle if you see this r1 to p1 to R2, to P2, to R3, to P3, to R1 back. So there is a cycle, but we want to see whether this cycle does mean a deadlock or not. So let's see P1. So P1 is having R1 and P1 wants R2, but this R2 is held by P2. So P1 waiting for R2, P2 also waiting for R3 r3 held by p3 p3 waiting for r1 so in this situation these three processes will keep on waiting they will never complete their execution so there is a deadlock so if we are applying our previous theory that there is a cycle in resource allocation graph then there will be a deadlock so in that case mm, this one is following the same there is a cycle so it means there is a deadlock now let's take another example so now what we have done we have changed the assignment like we have changed our this example and in this situation here if you can see this is from r1 to p1 to r2 to p2 to r1 back so we are having a cycle now we want to see whether this cycle does mean deadlock or not so let's see this process p3 is having r3 and r1 so whatever this process needs all the resource are already allotted to process p3 so p3 will complete its execution and p3 will be completed so when p3 is completed r3 and r1 will be available so p2 needs r3 p2 needs r1 these both resources will be allotted to p2 now p2 is also having all its resources it will complete its execution and the same will be applied for p1 so in that case if you have noticed that in our this example there was a cycle but uh, still all the processes have completed their execution successfully so there was no deadlock so the thing is that what we have concluded that in case of multiple instance per resource type if there is a cycle it does not mean that there will be a deadlock so our points are in resource allocation graph if there is no cycle then obviously there will not be any deadlock but if there is a cycle and uh, we are having one instance per resource type then there will be a deadlock 
and if uh, cycle if there is a cycle and multiple instances per resource are represented then there is a possibility of deadlock